Hi, everybody. I'm here with Vito uh, hey. from the YouTube channel. Uh, what's it called? Vito. Vito. Uh, <laughs> and, and he was at the Netflix walkout protest where they were protesting the Dave Chappelle uh, latest Netflix special over uh, trans jokes. And while well, he got attacked by the protesters, his friend got assaulted. We're going to show that footage that hasn't gotten gone as viral as as them attacking you and it's it's even more and in, way more intense i think um yeah. so and we actually have an interview with the guy that uh, attacked Vito and his friend so here we go why don't we um just tell us what made you go down here to this protest Vito well, I just, you know, I'm a comedian, and when I hear that a bunch of people are coming out to tell comedians to stop doing their job and stop making jokes, I was like, that's stupid. <laughs> I mean, uh, people keep, you know, there's like no lofty answers I can give. It's just this is a time of insanity. People are protesting comedians, and uh, it's time for somebody to just go out there and be like, all right, well, you guys are morons, and we're not going to just let you cancel comedy. We're not going to let it happen. It's ridiculous. And I mean, you did it in a really great way. You didn't go out there and call them morons. You just went out there and said jokes are funny. <laughs> and you yeah. like Dave. Chappelle. Well, we let, we let them show that they're the morons. I mean, we just showed up that had signs that said jokes are funny. We like Dave <laughs> and they all lost their minds. They all freaked out and they start screaming and yelling. And you're like, yeah, cause you guys are, awful and nobody agrees with you <laughs> like you're you're the minority in this situation i mean i know you think you're the minority the oppressed minority but no you're just crazy people all right here we go um now i mean you say crazy people but just to be clear are you you're not referring to you know pro transgender community in the transgender community you're, are you or are you or are you referring to well i mean you know, if just you a want certain if type you're, of protester if you're out and you want your rights, I mean, you're protesting as people who are, you know, if it was like against a politician who's like, I don't want trans people to be able to get jobs. I don't want to be able to have a home. I'd be like, well, yeah, go protest that. You're protesting a comedian. You're protesting against a guy who made a couple jokes. A guy who said, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I think gender is real. He said, I, I think gender is a real thing or something of that nature. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, look, I want I want you to have as many human rights as everybody else. I want everybody to have human rights. This is that's not what this is about. I mean, they'll they'll put it away and they'll say, well, Dave Chappelle doesn't want us to have human rights. He wants us to be stepped on. I'm like, no, no, he doesn't. And, you know, and you know that. And that's the other thing. I think these these campaigners, and these activists, they know what the conversation really is, but they try to make the people they're angry with sound crazier than they really are. And uh, yeah, it's just. We're having a very weird discussion right now. Here we go. So, yeah, and I mean, the problem, big problem is they won't even allow a discussion in a lot of ways. I mean, that it seems like James right. Chappelle with his um, special, he really started a discussion. Great discussion. Um, anyway, yeah. it, and, and as you can see, they're, they're really not open to having a discussion, at least these few in the crowd. Um, all right. Not you, even you, slightly. Okay, here we go. Why is he breaking my sign? Why is he breaking my sign? Don't you have free speech rights? Don't you have free speech rights of all of you? He's got a weapon! He's got a weapon! He's got a weapon! He's got a weapon! Oh, do you want me to drop my weapon? Yes. Okay. Get in the... There's my weapon. We're not trying to have anything. I'm not disrupting anything. Hi. I'm just here to say that jokes are funny, people. Dan Chappelle is a funny guy. I love Dave. I don't know why all the violence... I don't know why all the hate. 
All right. So yeah, remember when I said these people are crazy? Remember the that? Reason I, remember yeah, that thing I said? <laughs> Yeah, so, wait, it, is it crazy to just y shake a tambourine in someone's face and yell at them to repent, motherfucker? I would, yeah, <laughs> I would argue it's it's pretty crazy. Um, well, I don't know, man. You, I've been I've ahead. been as nice as I can to these, these, you know. Look, as I've said, there's a lot of trans people out there I agree with, and I know you have real problems. But if a guy shows up with a sign that says jokes are funny, you got to go, oh, well, you know, he's got a point. He can't go. I'm going to get in his face and shake this tambourine like a psychopath. It's and just, I feel bad. I feel bad for everyone there. Everyone, I feel bad for the people who are represented by this lady. You know, what you also do is if the tambourine lady starts screaming at a guy, you go, yo, lady, you're making us look like idiots. Put the fucking, why do we let tambourine lady come to this? Uh, or at the yeah. very least, uh, stop the condemn the people who who really do get violent um whether it's breaking signs or you know pushing someone oh yeah nobody's <laughs> nobody's come to me and said hey sorry we broke your stuff sorry we broke your sign uh you know that doesn't represent the true spirit of what's going on no it's that they put it up an article which then starts to lie about us there's some antifa website that's like well those guys were being violent i'm like violent you watch the video man i don't touch nobody I don't do nothing. Yeah. I don't want to touch anybody. I'm not there to touch people. And, uh, well, yeah, go yeah. Ahead. So there is an Antifa website, uh, you know, that you know categorizes categorizes you as like a chud and a bigot, and right. um, and now and hell, I, I'm not gonna. I don't want to dismiss that because they have a bigger following than I do. Pro you too, although you're growing do they? now. Yeah, like th at least 30k followers on Twitter. Uh, on and... Twitter, not on like YouTube. Or anything, okay. Though. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but beyond... I'll call them out, man. I'll say it right now. <laughs> Look, fucking Antifa website that says I'm out there punching people. Uh, let's That's do this up. thing. No, it's fucked no, up. Come yeah, to it's my... fucked up. Let's have a conversation. Come, 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 talk to me about how many people I supposedly beat up. Yeah, that would be right. Um, but it's probably not going to happen. But hey, please no. prove us wrong and have a conversation. A and so anyway, the reason I, I paused the video there is because it's not just some s relatively small Antifa website. It's the mainstream media. And right here you go. This is like at that frame that we paused, uh, the Associated Press took a photo and they yeah they said i was screaming yeah. profanities at people and that i was the peaceful protesters were begging me to leave you know the same peaceful protesters who broke my stuff which you know is the most peaceful thing when i think of a peaceful protest i think of grabbing the other signs of the <laughs> protest and breaking them that's that's the kind of peace i can get behind yeah uh they yeah they literally the ap refers to the people like swinging the instrument right in front of your face, yelling in front of your face to repent, motherfucker, repent, motherfucker, repent, motherfucker. And they did push you a bit on, on your way out and after destroying your sign, of course. And But they say that you are screaming profanities at them, too. Right. Unbelievable. Uh, I don't know where they got that. I, I, I don't know where they got any of this. I was, I mean, we have video footage. We're like, what are you talking yeah. about screaming? They're like, yeah, you were... You know, you were telling them the uh, the F word. or I'm like, no, that was that lady yelling at me. She was the one yelling that. I just said I like Dave Chappelle. I don't know yes. why you're telling me I'm yelling profanities at people, Associated Press. It's just so, it's so disturbing, too, because the AP is like one of the most, uh, you know, supposedly well, they're the, they're the, Yeah, they're yes. huge. I mean, all they, that stuff goes to other websites. There's still websites right now because they, you know, so they retracted this uh, caption, which... It still says I was shouting at people. I'm like, I wasn't shouting at anybody. I was shouting my message of love for comedy and Dave Chappelle. That's not against the rules. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the AP, they push that new that that gets pushed to any news site that just wants to run Associated Press articles. So there's still dozens of sites claiming I'm some sort of violent psychopath who yells at people, which ain't and, true. And no, no. And luckily for you, very luckily for you. I mean, just imagine if we didn't have the video to, to you yeah, know, no, they would just. I mean, uh, yeah, if we didn't have the video, you would just go by whatever the media said. And the media said, "Look at this big, loud, fat, white guy pushing people around." 
Check. When in reality, I'm like, dude, I'm just there with a sign, and these guys started breaking it. I don't know why. I don't know. Again, I know they're mad. I get that they're mad. They're like, well, we just thought we were going to show up and have a little private powwow and talk to the media, and it was going to be all positive. And then you showed up and dared to say that comedy is okay and we should leave Dave Chappelle alone. You got mad about that? Okay. I get that you're mad that somebody has a difference of opinion from you. But uh, don't break my stuff. You know, yeah. <laughs> what what else can I say? Yeah, that doesn't let you break my things. Even if you don't like the things I have, even if it's a sign that tells you you're an idiot, uh, that's the. That's, that's the, the amazing rule of the thing. Law. Is it wasn't anything no. like that. It was the most mild, mundane sign. Right. I like Dave. The sign didn't even say you're an idiot. The I like jokes. I, we like Dave. I like jokes. I like um, jokes, and they couldn't. They we got to break this sign. How dare you have the. Well, at that point, you might as well take a swing at me rather than break my sign. I think I'm more offensive at that point than the sign. But no, he went after the sign of all things. Also, that guy who attacked me is a Netflix writer, and he sucks. And we're uh, yes, getting, his, we're gonna we're getting hear, his name out there. Oh, yeah, gonna we're going to hear his him. great interview. I'm excited. Yeah, we're going to let you, you know, ha have your response to his interview. But yeah. first, let's let's, you know. I Indicate might sound like a, a yeah a dour individual right now. I just find this whole situation it's become more it's annoying than anything. Well, yeah, scary. Well, it's also scary, man. I mean, the the in Canada, a guy yeah. was uh put fined you in jail. forty thousand yeah. dollars. They they tried to get eighty thousand. They 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 and they found him guilty for forty thousand dollars for making a joke about a disabled kid, and it wasn't even about his disability. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, no, it is ugh. scary. And I guess I guess where you get annoyed or where you get upset is you're just like everybody knows how stupid this is. Even the people who I think believe like we're fighting on the side of good or whatever, I know they're sitting back looking at it like, oh man, do we really just find a guy forty thousand dollars for making a joke? Does that really make any sense? I think they know in their heart of hearts that like, oh, we're the bad guys. We're we're insane. And they're just kind of excusing it. They're, well, I don't know what they know. Yeah. I like it's it's crazy that uh, they've it maybe convinced crazy. themselves. Well, we're on the side of good. And this guy with the we like joke sign is a violent, horrible bigot. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I've dated trans women, man. I love the trans community. I just think when you start telling comedians, you can't do that. You can't joke about that. OK, well, we're going to push back because we're comedians. Like, it's what we do. We don't ha we don't have a lot of rules for comedy it's kind of not a thing that we're into yeah and i think yeah so that's that's great you mentioned you dated somebody in the trans community i didn't know that and here's the other thing dave Chappelle talks about it in his show he he tells a story of he yeah. ends up hooking up with a trans woman <laughs> and, yeah. and uh yeah i mean <laughs> and it's beautiful and he, yeah it's in a positive it's a pot he says it's a pause it was a positive experience i mean um she so my god yeah the people really didn't even watch the special that's just one of the positive uh ways that Chappelle framed uh, trans the trans community in his special just one of the many ways right uh, so um we live in a time of great madness yeah i've literally in some of them uh, the critics who smear Chappelle with scathing reviews even admit they haven't even watched the damn thing. Right. G GQ, there was a whole review at midway through. The author admits they didn't even watch it on Bad Faith, which is a huge podcast. Uh, had a guy on who was uh, part of a civil rights group uh, advocating for the removal of the special. It's a 20-year-old civil rights group, U.S. civil rights group, advocating for the removal of the special. One of the other guests admitted he didn't watch it. He commented on the whole podcast and admitted oh he didn't my watch God. it. Yeah. Uh He's yeah. Well, I mean, that's the that's the problem with living in an outrage culture, is it's just you get angry. You don't think you just get angry. And we really need to move people past that. We need to go being angry, first of all, is not a it's not a character trait. It's not a personality. It's also not healthy for you. Uh why don't you Instead of being perpetually angry, go, well, let me let me see. Well, what am I so angry about? Or am I being baited into this by a group of maybe uh, disingenuous campaigners who are out for fame and clout for themselves and don't necessarily care about the greater good? I've talked to some people in the trans community 
who there's that one transgender campaigner, this uh, Ashley Marie, whatever, who's in charge of the walkout. And they're like, listen, man, that per I mean, that person that came out has crazy uh, racist tweets in her history. They're like, I don't think this person necessarily cares about our community. I think she's like, this is my chance to get a TV special. Yeah. So because, again, if you really cared about the transgender community, wouldn't you spend your time and resources fighting against true bigotry and like people who are actually yeah. trying to do bad things instead of doing these loud protests against celebrities? Is yes. Dave Chappelle the greatest <laughs> enemy of the transgender community? Really, truly? I don't believe that. And how much of an activist is she is she really? There was a hilarious uh little clip I found. Um well I found a, a lot of it funny when you contrast it with you know her old tweets, but one of the other transgender people uh was kind of praising the organizer, Ashley Marie Preston, and the best thing he said about her is like, oh, she's done so much, so this, this so many people uh love her for her awkward pause embarkment on activism her embarkment. <laughs> that's what he said <laughs> he, had to, he had to pause like wait what has she done uh, well with her embarkment on activism. not even anything you could accurately yeah. describe as activism <laughs> although well, she's, this, I mean, she's out pause. there and yeah. she looks like interesting and i guess that's good for us <laughs> she looks good in front of a camera because she wears these elaborate i don't know headdresses and stuff yeah, I like, mean, well, I guess that's what you need when you got a protest. You need a lady with a fancy headdress. So everybody goes, oh, I'll take a picture of her for the newspaper. Uh, yeah, it's not really about the substance of one's character or speech anymore. It's about the theatrics of things. Mm -hmm. This is very much. Uh, I don't know, man. It's bizarre. Let me ask you, you mentioned anger is a real issue, obviously. I mean, who can deny that? Um but let me ask you, I mean, I know we're all, pers we all kind of fall into it. We're all, especially with social media, it kind of, it works off of anger. It feeds us anger. The algorithms purposely try to feed us anger because it leads to more engagement. And I'm wondering if, um, I mean, have you fallen prey to that at all? Let me ask you, I'll just ask you straight up. Is it fair uh, to call this an assault on you to say that you were assaulted? I mean, I by the legal definition of assault, as I understand it, yeah. I, I don't actually know how that term works. I know there's assault and battery. My understanding is assault is, you know, a violent action with the intent to intimidate. Mm, I mean, mm. this guy, you know, grabs my stuff, breaks it, and then yells, he's got a weapon, which seems oh, like a yeah. pretty clear tactic to be like, hey, let's beat this guy up by falsely accusing him of being violent himself. Yeah. So uh, if I'm wrong on the definition of assault, someone's welcome to tell me. I'm not saying he actually hit me, but he did put me in a situation where it seems like he wanted other people to hit me. I don't know, man. And I also yeah. can't speak. Maybe he didn't think he was trying to get me beat up. But if you're in a crowd and you yell, this guy's got a weapon, you should know what that is signaling to the rest of the crowd. It's signaling tackle this violent man, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is after he tore your sign right. and then called your signless pole a weapon. I mean, he, it's just incredible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, everything maybe sounds, you never know. Like you could say, I, as I've said to people, I'm like, I don't know how scared I'm supposed to be when an Antifa kid chases my, mm. to, me to my car and gets my license plate. Is he just fucking around because he thinks it's funny to try and like fuck with me? Or is he like really going to take my license plate and give it to his buddies and have them you know, come to my house and burn my, you know, house to the ground. I don't know, you know, how you're supposed to interpret these threats. So I'm trying to be very, you know, okay, well, at least I have my happiness and my sanity. But, uh, I mean, as you know, my friend Dick did get attacked by at the protest. It's not like there weren't violent people there. And he got yeah. legitimately attacked. Like, I agree. Head smashed into a rock. And we're going to show that. But first, I want to completely vindicate you for anyone who's not familiar uh -huh. and play the rest of this video I put together. So, okay, so this, the AP caption again says <laughs> that you were screaming profanities <laughs> at peaceful protesters. Here's what you were actually doing. We didn't see it before and we don't see it after. And so I'll just let it play out to prove it. Okay. That. This just shows. Yeah. 
<laughs> if you hear Dick, you can hear Dick yell, what's that little guy doing? And he's referring to the crazy tambourine lady. Uh, so um, uh, the reason we had, yeah, so just to be clear. So um, who was it? Jesse Signal, I think, put this together. And it yeah. just kind of shows that this matches up with the photograph perfectly. So, you know, yeah. the photograph is bullshit. I mean, I'm sorry, the caption under the photograph is bullshit. Right. There you go. Green yeah. green woman uh, to, you know, over your left shoulder, taking a photograph. I mean, look, la later on, we're trying to, like, figure out. I, I honestly don't know what this guy's saying. Because there's, like, like later on, I was telling him, like, listen, man, I've, you know, had trans girlfriends. You know, I'd be sucking and whatever, you know. And I was giving graphic descriptions of uh, my loving sex life with this beautiful trans woman. And I'm like, but that wasn't shouting profanities. That was just me being gross. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe is that shouting I, I mean at no point did i look at anybody and go <clears throat> f you you stupid <clears throat> trans person and you go in the dirt again i don't hate the trans community i really don't i just don't understand the things that they are taking and it, to be fair i hate this idea of the trans community because it's not like there's one trans community i talk to plenty of trans people who are like dude i love dave Chappelle. i hate these mm -hmm. fucking yelling Absolutely. psychopaths right Absolutely. The idea that any of these people speak for the trans community, if anything, I feel bad for the trans community. They have these psychopaths representing them. And uh, they're like, dude, we don't have a problem with jokes. We don't know why this is happening. It's a very weird situation. I had uh, an old friend of mine um, who used to care about censorship when it was happening to just the left. Right. Uh, and he doesn't give a fuck that I'm censored now. Like my my video exposing Ashley Marie Preston as a, as a hypocrite, um, he didn't give a fuck, and he told me that I was dismissing, like the trans community, or just like I wasn't, I was, and I'm just like that's not at all what's happening. You are the one that is. You won't even acknowledge that some trans people, many trans people, had absolutely no problem with the Chappelle Netflix special. Right, absolutely no problem whatsoever. Um, that's dismissing and erasing the trans community, a good part of it. Um, and also uh, those yeah. trans people, I mean, a lot of people, this conversation is not an honest conversation because so many people are afraid to talk. You know, you can't say we're having an honest conversation when anyone who comes out and goes, well, I'm a trans person. I don't mind Dave Chappelle's jokes. You go, well, cancel. You're canceled and you're not part of the trans community and you're a bad trans person, you know, and that's what's happening. I've talked to trans people and they're like, I can't talk about this stuff. You know, these people don't mm -hmm. want a conversation. They say, well, we, you know, we're having an honest conversation. You're not because anybody you disagree with, you shove back into the closet and you tell them F you, you, you have no say here. And it's really, uh, it's tragic to see these very loud, very angry people kind of domineering the whole conversation around trans issues. Cause uh, man, there's a lot of stuff that the trans community, I totally agree with. Like, you know, you should be able to wear whatever you want, talk however you want. I don't care. It's America, man. Like, do 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 whatever feels right. There's a lot of, you know, complicated considerations of, like, where does your rights as a trans person begin and uh, a biological woman end? You know, or should you guys be sharing a prison cell or a locker room? Okay, we got to talk about that. But for the most part, I think people in America understand, dude, if you want to wear, I don't know, your, your hair up like a beehive, I'm not going to stop you. Uh... But again, the conversation is being taken over by loud people who are like, "And you can't, you can't joke about us. That's one of the rules." And we're like, "That's bigotry." And we're like, "Well, that's not how it works, man." No, no. I mean, yeah. <sighs> if you want a huge part of being equal is getting offended. Yeah. You know, uh, sometimes just like everybody else. That's just and being and being joked about just like everybody else. That's equality, you can't man. say I want to live my life. I mean, I know it's deep inside what you feel, but. You have to understand that if you're going to live your life in a way that is like entirely foreign to the majority of people, the majority of people here, I want to, you know, I don't know. I don't know the best way to put it because it always sounds graphic, but I want to alter my genitalia. Basically, I want to turn one part into another part. OK, well, that is a wildly foreign, shocking concept to the majority of people. 
people are going to take need some time to wrap their head around that. And the idea that you would say, and you can't joke about it, you're setting your, we're going to joke about it. A lot of people don't get it. They're coming to terms with it. And comedy is how we normalize these kind of concepts. The more you talk about it, the more you go, okay, I mean, it's weird and it's foreign, but I can almost wrap my head around the yeah. idea that like you truly feel this way. And, and then I got does, there because yeah. you let me talk about it. Right. Yeah. Then it really does come become normal. Hence normalized. Right. Yeah. So if you <laughs> tell then... people, no, don't make a joke about it. You have to pretend it doesn't exist or that everyone's totally cool with it. Nah, man. It still makes me feel weird when I think about it, when I go, why on earth would anyone do that to themselves? But I'm, if we talk about the more we talk about, the more I go, but I understand that people do it and it's their choice. I, I don't know. It's complicated, but you can't just shut those discussions down as anybody who doesn't understand it yet is a bigot. We just got here. We're just this is a new thing for us, really. You can't just over if overnight I told you cutting off your head was an act of great bravery and you're a bigot if you talk about it, you would tell me, well, I'm going to talk about it. You know, society changes and we have these conversations. Well, what I think is especially what one of the many things that makes this ridiculous is that comedians have always talked about dicks and pussies and yeah. how like what do you expect? Exactly. I mean, that's. Any topic with dicks, dicks or pussies, they're going to talk about. And when you have a topic that you have a topic both, uh, that is I dicks mean, turning into yeah, pussies, that's yeah, like I mean, comedy gold, right? Yeah, there. seriously. I, I mean, that's I, obviously you know it can be done uh, better it can by be some. Done respectfully. I thought Chappelle, yeah, I thought yeah. Chappelle, and I thought Chappelle did it very respectfully. Um, but whatever. Again, I mean, if Chappelle had come out and said, let's take a machine gun to all these crazy transgender people, I'd be like, OK, I understand why you're mad. But it wasn't anything like that. Uh, and, and they like to pretend that the kind of comedy out there is like, oh, it's hatred. They hate us. Nah, man, it's just a very strange, weird, foreign concept. Uh, and people are taking time to get their head around it. Some of us, honestly, we're never going to get our heads. I don't think there'll ever be a part of me that goes, I think that's a good idea. I'm always going to be, I mean, maybe for like, if you have severe psychological and it's the only possible solution, fine. But mo for the rest of my life, I'm going to say, wow, that is extreme. I'm never going to be, you know, shaking the, having the parade or whatever. I'm going to go, I don't get it. And I'm never going to get it. But do I want you to have every human right in the world? Do I want anyone to be? Yes. Do I want anyone to deny you a job or housing? No. Of course. Okay. Not. And that's where you should want to arrive at as a minority is, or whatever it is. You shouldn't want people to go, yeah, I'm on board shaking the flag. You should just want people to be like, listen, man, it's America. You're an American. You get everything you want. We're going to give you uh, and, and, you know, the rest of the world, too. But specifically, yeah. America, that's what you should Do be asking for. I understand, you know, how people would still think it's weird, um, but just in my life experience, I mean, I know a couple people who did become trans, um, and it's it, and, and you know what? So I'll give you, like, for example, elementary school. There was a girl, total tomboy, and she could do more pull-ups than any guy. Yeah. And, and she did, and she would go swimming with, like, you know, boy trunks on not a, and and this is before trans you know transgender was a thing i know that there is an issue with some people being influenced and in wrongly believing that they should have a transition and they regret it later that's a very real problem but there's absolutely people where this is a real uh issue um and yeah. um anyway so that well, no, I get what you're saying is that you're more comfortable. I mean, my whole thing is I'm like, I think that transgenderism, I mean, it could just be an expression of so many different things. So I'm not like, uh, I guess for me, more the, the surgery aspect of it. I think a transgender person who doesn't get surgery, I'm like, oh, well, I totally understand that. You just really like this manner of class uh, dress and clothing or whatever else uh now whether or not that definitively makes you a woman or not that's a whole different question i know a lot of biological women who would say you know you're reinforcing gender stereotypes by saying this type of behavior is woman like or feminine or whatever else and i get that but i i am saying that somebody who 
likes those behaviors and associates them with being female. I can understand them being like, well, I'm just going to take the shortcut and declare myself female rather than be a complicated guy who's into dressing like, you know, in feminine clothing or whatever else. Um, though I do find, again, just this the surgical step, I really feel like that should be a more... It, it seems like that should be far less common. <laughs> like, that seems like it should be kind of a last resort. Well, it's, it's not common, though, is it? Vito? I mean, it's still rare as hell, right? It's still uh, very rare. I mean, I mean it's, it's more common than it used to be because it didn't used to be a thing or, I mean, hardly a yeah. thing, but it's still very rare. I mean, I don't know. Just... I don't have the exact numbers. All I know is, like, there's that, uh, do you know that Jazz Jennings TV show or whatever? There's a transgender teenager named Jazz Jennings. No, no, I don't know about that. Okay, so I don't know what show uh, channel it's on TLC. And to be fair, I haven't watched the program. I've read it was an article describing the program and what what happens. So Jazz Jennings is a uh, teenage trans girl, and I believe she was 17. She was all excited because she's, you know, always wanted to have a female anatomy. She wanted to have a neo, whatever they call it, uh, a vagina. Am I allowed? I don't know what I'm allowed to say it's... on anywhere yet. A neo you say whatever you want. You say whatever I don't you know. Want. I don't I'm know. streaming on Rumble. You okay. say whatever you want. So I can say whatever I, mean, I want. Yeah. I can swear yeah. and everything. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, so she wants a neo vagina. The doctor goes, Well, here's the deal. We started you on puberty blockers when you were 10, which means that you now have the penis of a 10 year old boy because it hasn't grown at all. So we do not have enough skin to turn your penis into a vagina. So we're going to have to take strips of flesh from your stomach so we have enough to give you a vagina and then they have a big party where like the my penis is coming off party where they have a penis cake and like hot dogs and they're cutting them up and then she has the surgery and it doesn't take 100 percent. so her new vagina is like splitting open and i'm just reading all of this and i'm like this sounds like a fucking horror well show and like no one knows what they're doing well, like, my God, Vito. I mean, just think. I mean, how can anyone not know know what they're getting into? I mean, just well, because you're a kid, dude. When I was a oh, kid, hold on, hold on. How, yes, how old is this person? Remind me how old. Seventeen this person at was. this point, but she's okay, been on this journey. Young. She's been on that journey since she was ten years old. Since she was ten, her whole goal since she was ten was I'm gonna get a vagina. Hmm. And uh, I go, maybe you put that in your head when you're a kid, and you never think twice, like. I mean, you could say, well, she had all this time to, uh, you know, reconsider. Yeah, but if you have a reality show, that's all about your... Uh, I mean, granted, most transgender kids aren't getting a reality show. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, there's just these weird societal, like, well, I'm already down this path. I'm already, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound. Uh, it does It does kind of make you wonder. Our, our, and again, the reason this article was uh, important is because some of these doctors, one of the doctors who was her doctor is in this article, and they're basically saying, yeah, maybe puberty blockers. Maybe, maybe that wasn't the best idea. Maybe mm. we didn't research those enough. And you're like, yeah. bro, now uh, if you can't just say that lightly. Like, you said puberty blockers were totally cool. You can't be like, yeah. ah, we're rethinking it. Like, Jesus no, no, Christ. I totally agree that, you know, this decision should should not get made i don't think anyone when under kids the are age, under a certain age absolutely dude I, I i would not be i would say 25 i don't know like at what age oh would come you... on come on i mean if you're dude, at 18 you're an adult you could you should be able to make decisions 18 year olds 18 are the or stupidest 21. people i've ever met in my life why i would say you need like five ten years of count but here's well here's I'm... why i say that vita hold on. let me let me yeah. say because because truly i've i knew a girl who was clearly, you know, wanting to be a boy or like everything about her was a boy. Every like the, everything she the way she acted and just everything. She was clearly that. And, and it, but that's not, such a complicated. Yeah. I mean, there's, no, but, there's go ahead. Go ahead. And it's beyond like tomboy. Like she knew from day thing. one she wanted to be a boy. Yeah. Like it's not just she like she felt like one. she acted like one. And um, but but is she one now? Truly, can you I, truly become a uh, boy? You're always going to be. I hate to say it. Well, a tr she's yeah. always going to be a trans man. She will never truly be a biological man, at least. 
uh, and there's a lot of complicated. And I know, look, if she's ha- if she's happy, then great. Sure, that's the only thing. Sure, I don't, but I don't know if this leads to true happiness a lot of the time. Well, get get the get the. Okay, no, no, you're right. It does. There are. I've heard some terrible horror stories when people. I've read know. some story. Yeah, some stories but, from some famous tra- yeah. uh, people who transition and later go. I've made the biggest mistake of my life. And I, when I hear that from grown men and women who had, you know, decades to live with the idea that I'm a woman, I need this to happen. And then I hear teenagers going ahead with it. I'm like, how many more of those stories are going to come out? Yeah. Yeah. But, but Okay. So I, you know, learned in biology like you and probably everyone our age and above that you had, you would have either one of two types of chromosome, chromosome variants, right? Pairings, XX yeah. or XY. And XX sure. is female, right? XY is male. Right. I was, I mean, I, I failed biology, but. Y is male, yes. But, oh yeah, so if, but here's uh, truly, and I, I looked into this, it, and there are abnormalities where you might have like XXX and other abnormalities. Now they're extremely rare. Um, and it's not just uh, abnormalities with the the chromosomes, but like within the everything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm reg- again, I failed biology, but but there there really are like at the at biology. This is not just how people think, but biologically, there is more variety than just X X X Y. Now that now, don't get me wrong, I'm not denying that that is almost in, in most cases like 99. Point nine whatever percent it's xx or xy but there are abnormal but what do you want me what do you want me to do with that information necessarily like what do i do with the knowledge that there's uh you know abnormality chromosomal pairs well, how does that honestly, inform someone who has a normal xy pair to be like well because people exist that have abnormalities you can now claim any gender you want well all i mean all i I don't think you need to do anything with that. I think it's just, I just think that's really interesting because apparently it, that's true. Um, I don't find it interesting, honestly. Yeah. Like I'd go, yeah, yeah. There's mutations in nature, but the, uh-huh. in no way does that inform which genders exist. I mean, when I define an animal, oh, de- I'm not saying, yeah. yeah, well, but hold on. But if the chromosome pairing defines gender, well, then wouldn't that if you have an abnormality and it's not just XX or XY, then I mean, that would change things, right? It would change things in what way that there's more than two genders. I mean, or it's, it's something different. It's something different. If- well, I'll, I'll lay it out this way. I mean, yeah, there's alternate chromosomal pairs, but you can still pair everything down into two genders. You just go. Well, does- there's, sure, there's male and female. Yeah, but I guess. Yeah. You have male and female. You um, have. Do you menstruate or not? All right. If your chromosome pair is able to menstruate, then you're a female. If it's not, then you're a male biologically. Well, there you uh, go. But here's the thing. Yeah, that, that's a good. That's fair. No, point. go ahead. However, go ahead. however, however, in my, you know, what I've found in my research is, and again, I'm not somebody who's. I'm not trying to prove anything. I'm just going into this curi- with yeah. curiosity. It, it, you can have. Uh, what if, what about people who have a vagina, but they don't have uh, a period because they don't have, uh, God damn it. I told you I failed biology, but well, they have a pro they don't have a uterus. Yes. They don't have a uterus. Well, if they don't have the ability to menstruate, they have a vagina, but no, they have a vagina. So it's like, well, it's, it's, is it, but do they also have a penis at this point? I don't know if any like, uh, chromosome pair where you have a vagina, but no, uh, and it's not just um, chromosome pair. There are other uh, biological ch- um, abnormalities that affect this kind of thing, like whether you would have, you know, yeah, ha- might not have a uterus, uh, or or like, you know, what about if you have both, which happens to some people, hermaphrodites, or at least that's what they right. Use to call them. I well, I again, I say whether or not that that particular mutation is associated with the ability to menstruate Menstruate. like if i took if i took 10 of those individuals and six of the 10 could menstruate i would say okay well then that's female but does that make sense i think that totally makes sense if you menstruate that's that sounds female you have a uterus that sounds female but what about the what if they don't have 
a uterus and yet they have a vagina. They have all this other male stuff because of these other abnormalities, but they have a vagina. All right. I... I mean, I would, again, just still use that standard categorization of, like, I don't know if there is a mutation that exists where you have a vagina but no uterus. Like, maybe there is. I don't I know. there is. I'm... Well, if there is, I mean, I would say, but do you not have a penis at that point as well? You just have a vagina but no uterus? I believe so. I think the formation of a vagina it infers a uterus, but I could be wrong. And Well, no, absolutely, but there are abnormalities. That's, you know... Right, but are the abnormalities like everyone in that type doesn't have a uterus or like sometimes uh again, I've just always heard of gender as you just divide it up according to the ability to menstruate and it makes it into a very clean binary. Uh and yeah, but, but I don't that's know. The thing is it's not that clean if there's if you know if you it, But it is pretty clean on a on a global I'm not scale. It's pretty clean. I, now remember, I'm just saying that you know, this tiny, tiny percentage of cases where you have these very real abnormalities. Okay, a tiny amount of people are born without legs. Would you consider the, the human animal an uh, animal that has legs? Yes. You know, you can't use mutations to define the whole. Same for, uh, you know, women. Some women are born without uteruses, but you would still say a woman is... So it's a, if it's, they have a vagina, right? Is that... Fair to say. So I mean, I would assume a vagina and a uterus are the the associated uh, essential menstrual functions to sure. define a woman. Okay. And some are born with like non-functioning parts, or the parts are damaged and yeah, don't develop, yeah. or whatever else. But you're still belonging to a categorization that typically would have developed those parts. Fair, I agree. Now, yeah. what? But but just to show how this really is, um not totally simple all the time i mean what so what do you think about people who are born with both because that does happen i think if what you're born you, with, yeah what happens yeah. what What are you uh choose one i, I don't care whichever one you like hmm. i mean are you able if you're honestly the honest answer is you have a penis and you're able to menstruate you're a woman interesting if okay. you have if you have yeah. the ability to yeah, menstruate yeah. you're a woman yeah, yeah. even if you have a penis that's it uh and here's the real question is I mean, because what else is what? How else do you define it? What would you define a woman as? No, I mean, I j vagina is a woman, penis is a man. But if you but got, then, both, but then you're, but then you're saying that. But I'm saying with like transgender, do you accept a transgender woman as a woman? Do you say that's a woman? A tra a transgender woman is a transgender. A woman. transgender woman is a transgender woman, but not a, uh, well, obviously not a biological woman. Would you say a, a well, transgender woman well, is truly a woman? Um, I, I think that's it. I think I really honestly think that's a good question. Now, if they have the XX chromosome without the abnormalities, that's an easy question. That's an easy answer. Then they're Which a woman. Is, they're a biological woman. Yeah. If they have an abnormality, I'm not sure. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, Here's, I would yeah. lean towards woman, but, but I. Uh, Here's I the problem. Maybe with it's, the, it's a different kind of woman. I yeah. don't know. I don't know. Well, the problem that we have is that we rely on self-identification, which is the idea that you just choose which one. But when you do that, you're essentially saying that neither man nor woman has any definition. It's just based entirely in your head. It's entirely inobservable, which means that there's I could put you under a microscope and look at every part of you. And I would never be able to tell if you're a man or a woman because it's all what you've determined. Right. Uh, and frankly, that just leads to a variety of absurdities. I mean, you can't have laws based on identities that people have made up in their heads. Uh, I currently have a female ID in the state of California. I obtained it by going to the DMV and paying a $50 charge oh, or whatever wow. to fill out one form. Huh. So if I get arrested, I'm going to make the, you know, huh. I can make the argument to the judge. Well, okay, send me to female prison. Oh, wow. Does that make <laughs> sense to you? Does that sound reasonable? No, 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 it doesn't. No, no. That, I mean, no, of course not. I mean, and I'm even willing to say guy, as someone yeah. who would do, and I'm do, going to lady prison if it happens. I'm going to go, well, <laughs> you guys have decided this is the rules, and I would rather go there than scary man prison where much more horrible things happen. So the idea is we're writing, we're writing laws based on, again, this concept of uh, self-identification, a concept I find bizarre and flawed and not accounting for uh the absurdities of what i don't understand is if you want to wear dresses if you think 
excuse me. If you think you have, or let's go back to your uh, classmate example. This person is very athletic. They like wearing boys' clothing. Uh, you know, they enjoy. I mean, everything. I don't know. I mean, this is it, sports. I, ca I can't yeah. stress enough that this is before anybody had even heard of transgender, and especially us elementary school kids, especially her. Right. There was no fucking internet, you know, and and uh, I mean, cut, hair, hair cut short, just everything was totally but i guess my question boy. to that yeah. person would be why okay sure why do you want to be a boy why don't you just do all these things that you claim you want now and just enjoy no one is yeah, sure. stopping you sure. from being athletic or dressing sure. in a certain way what is it about the word boy that you think is so essential well, it's not the, it's, it's, to obviously your it's not the, it's a word it's a, no i i am gonna argue it is yeah. just a word though Boy? That is my, I think that is how it should be treated in society. The word woman should just mean someone who menstruates. It should not well, have then it's not any just the word. <laughs> it has a definition. Well, I mean, words. I'm not saying words don't have definitions, of course. But I'm saying right now it has all these associated uh, emotions and feelings. It's not based on anything concrete. People will tell you, I feel like a woman. And you go, I need you to I need you to uh, drill into that for me. What does it mean to feel like a woman? What it, what on earth could that possibly mean? And a lot of the times, again, you're going to get what I would consider to be very superficial answers. They're going to say, I like playing with draw dolls. I like wearing uh, pretty clothes. I like talking in a high-pitched voice. And I would, again, argue none of this is an essential quality of being a woman. You can do all of that right now as a man. And I think we sure. have gotten into this weird thing where we have these weird uh emotional associations with these terms and i, I kind of want to tell people like dude just you can be a boy and do all the things you see girls doing you can be a girl and do all the things you see boys doing we're not going to stop you and there's no i know it might seem easier to go well i like those things therefore i'm a woman and i want to live among you know in this female society or whatever i would say it's much more braver and honest to just say i'm a boy who likes those things Say, or I'm a girl who likes sports and likes being a tomboy and wants to dress as whatever else. And, you know, but ultimately deep down, I still have a vagina. Uh, and that, that is the, that it would be braver to me because the problem is, again, we're reinforcing these gender stereotypes where we go, well, you know, you see a kid playing with a doll. It used to be like, you know, a boy playing with doll used to say, well, that's fine. Boys can play with dolls. That was a very progressive message. Now you go, uh oh, my kid or not. Uh oh, but just, oh, my kid might be trans. My kid might actually be a woman. No, it's just your kid is playing with a doll and play with a doll. Stop. Stop assuming that he was born into the wrong body, which is, again, a weird a uh, concept a weird phrase born into the wrong body no one is born into the wrong body i hate to say it the body you're given is the body you're given we don't there is no like factory handing them out we gave the wrong one to the wrong person why not just settle into your skin i mean look to a to a i'm not going to tell people if you really want to get plastic surgery and have a jawline or get taller through some experimental chinese surgery i get that you can fit into society better when you achieve you know, the look inside that you desire. But I think when you get to this radical step of, again, you can get all those surgeries and still define yourself as your birth gender. I can get a big old pair of boobies, which I, you know, probably should be working on anyway. I got to get you in shape. <laughs> yeah. so I was watching my... a nice pair, no? I, I was going to say, I'm watching my protest footage. I'm like, buddy, you've been eating too much. Um, <laughs> but if I really want that, again, you can have that, and you don't have to say, and now I'm a woman, accept me into the woman club. You know, I'm going to uh, start claiming scholarships for women. I'm going to go to lady prison. I'm going to mm. share a locker room with women. I mean, it's, again, and it's all very complicated. I mean, I can also understand why a guy with huge boobs might be uncomfortable in a man's locker room. And that's all stuff we got to figure out. And I know that's a cop out answer. But again, it just feels like we're getting very deep on reinforcing these kind of old school mm -hmm. stereotypes. And I find it bizarre. I, I totally agree that. You know, people, especially children, should not be encouraged uh, to believe that they need to alter their bodies you know, to be happy. But we have a reality yeah, television show where someone's, yeah. you know, taking off her vagina or taking her penis off. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like that is the kind of thing where 
again, we're supposed to believe like, oh, my God, I can't believe this brave 17 year old is having her penis removed on television. I would go. This feels like it should be a very quiet family matter, very respectful behind closed doors. Uh, and instead, it's this this out well, crowd ritual. I mean, yeah, but I mean, if t- let's face it, like, I, I guess that's I've never watched those shows, although. I did work on a real world episode, which yeah. was like the first, it was the first show with a trans woman. She was in the cast of the real world. It was the real world DC. So maybe I was also in addition to the elementary school experience, you know, classmate. I, I watched as a post-production, I was an editor and I like just around the clock, you know, you, you read and see here, you know, these, hear these people talk in the confessional all, all, 24 yeah. seven. And so, I mean, there's, I mean, you're not denying that these people really do feel this way or, or are you, I that believe they- that I believe that they are depressed by the circumstances into which they were born. <clears throat> they believe that had they been born the other gender, you know, which is a fantasy. I wish I was born, you know, to rich parents. I would say, okay, we all have sure. that. Sure. And they, but they believe that they have, they are in a position to change that now that they're able to change the circumstances of their birth and give themselves the body that they believe uh, will lead them to happiness. Now, I mean, there's various studies pointing which way or whatever, but I know John Hopkins, which pioneered these surgeries uh, back in like the seventies and eighties. I mean, it's been going on for a little while. They eventually closed that clinic because they said, listen, we did a bunch of the surgeries uh, we looked at the data and people's, you know, outlooks didn't really change. They didn't really get better. It kind of felt like we were just kind of reinforcing uh, the wrong sort of beliefs and that the better thing to say was you can't really change your body. You can't really change your gender. Why don't you arrive at a place where, you know, and again, come, dress come to peace with your come with to yourself, peace with your body yeah. and yourself. Yeah. And the gender is not this magic. To me, it looks like it's being held up as a miracle cure. You always want a miracle cure in life. I even look for them. I go on the Internet. I go, is there a pill that's going to fix this? Is there a pill that's going to fix it? And there never is. And there never will be. It might get you a little closer to what you want. And again, I'm even OK with transgender people who want to have. OK, things that are reversible. If you really want to get like breast implants or whatever, if you realize, oh, my God, I've made a horrible mistake and get it undone. But there's, you know, I, I keep reading stories from kids who go, oh, I, I got a mastectomy. I had my, you know, boobs taken off. I had my penis taken off. There's no going back because I thought I was going to be cured. I thought this was going to make me my fullest and truest self. And uh, the doctors at no point, the doctors did not give me the kind of pushback I should have gotten. The mm-hmm. doctor should have told me, listen, man, this isn't going to be a one c- uh, click fix. You need to think about this for a period of time. People are saying, no, the doctors have told me, go with it. You are strong and brave and true. And we finally, human society has figured out how to transform you into everything you've ever wanted to be. So I don't know, man. And maybe I'm wrong. As I say, we're, I, I keep telling people, look, this is all going to play out across the next 20 years. In the next 20 years, we're either going to see the transgender people or the happiest motherfuckers under the sun. We're all going to go, fuck, I wish I had changed my gender. No. Uh, they, they have the highest you know, happiness rates and longevity rates in the history of the human world. Or we're going to see, oh, my God, nothing has changed. Or in some cases, it's gotten worse. We don't necessarily know. And that's why I urge caution. And a lot of doctors are saying the same. Yeah. I mean, of course, people should be cautious. I guess the main thing I want to be clear on is that um, gender dysphoria, it is a real mental condition. Like, that's real. Like, people really can feel like they are the opposite sex trapped in there. Absolutely. The yeah. I mean, there, yeah. you can, there are people who think I should have been born a girl. Yeah. It's, it's not question, a matter. I, yeah. I the question start, is what is the treatment for that? Sure. Sure. I think that's yeah. that. Yeah. And, and is the yeah, treatment the to more, go, you're right. You should have been born a girl. Something went wrong and we have the technology to fix it. Or do we go there's you really can't be born to the wrong body there's nothing you can do about it you we can give you a facsimile of what you want you know again when you give someone a neo vagina you're not giving them a true vagina it does not function the way a true vagina would uh but we can give you a facsimile to get you as close as you want to that i mean if it it can get a penis to to get off and it it, that's basically the i mean one of the prime (laughs) functions i mean 
Let's right. I mean that's that's pretty real. That's the main that's one of the main functions. You'd hope. So, but again, and I, again a lot of the concern is that kids are the ones who are who who doesn't want to change when you're a kid? When you're a kid, you wanna you think everything's wrong with yourself. I there were so many things as a kid. I think there was a period where if I if I had, had access, if transgenderism had been as popular as it is now, I think there's a very real chance that young Vito Giswaldi would have went, you know what? I, I do I do think that I'm more sensitive than the other boys and I, you know, do enjoy collecting toys and well, then you might fanciful shit who knows then you might just think you're gay that trans i mean there's a big difference i mean just there's there's so many different things um right anyway it's uh, a very uh, concerning it's a very confusing and exciting time very exciting <laughs> <laughs> i i guess i um i mean i agree with i, I think everything you said except there's some things i just want to be clear like i do think some people out there they think and it sounded like you were thinking this, but now, uh, now I, I don't think so. But you correct me if I'm wrong. Some people are saying that the trans people are self the people with gender dysphoria are self deluding themselves. But that's not actually what's happening. There is a, I mean, th I'm sure it could happen, but t but by definition, there is a, a medical condition called yeah. gender dysphoria where and where people really do identify as as the opposite sex. And and um, there is very real biology associated with it. With dys dysphoria? Y yes. Uh, which bio? What do you mean by bio? Uh, what is the biological uh, com Gee component? Gee whiz, where have I been? Component? Yeah. Of uh, dysphoria. I I wish I could remember off the top of my head. Remember, I I you're saying like biology. something something in the brain indicates yeah. dysphoria. Yes, yes, I think so. Yes. Well, I haven't heard this, so I would have to be provided some sort yeah. of a uh, thing, but I won't force yeah. you to go search it up right now. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I and I I tried. I swear to God, and I tried finding people from the trans community to talk about this. Uh, I started conversations, you know, they were very complimentary of me actually in my videos. Yeah. And then I think, and then they, then I got blocked. <laughs> uh, and I think well, if you want I... some great videos on this subject, there's a YouTuber who's a good friend of mine named Mr. Girl who recently hmm. did a series of interviews with a lot of people from across the gender spectrum. He had uh, not just transgender people, but this trans uh, detransitioners, those who were transgender and wanted to change back uh with transphobes even turfs whatever else kind of talk to people on all aspects of the equation and uh, a lot of that uh information that was uh i got from him was very interesting uh just from his videos uh ultimately i would say though look i'm not uh this is not about whether or not d gender dysphoria is a delusion i mean clearly that's true the only place i think delusion or maybe wishful thinking i don't know what where you want to come uh what you want to say is, will society ever truly accept the concept of a gender transition? Will, is society, is this something, because I would say instinctually, a lot of transgender people, if I look at them, I, I will look and I'll go, oh, well, I, I, I see your biological gender. Not always. A lot of people, like, you know, can get to the point where they truly do just pass. But a lot of transgender people, I go, well, that there is a biological man. That there is a biological woman. And we're kind of trying to brute force, uh, I don't know what, what you would want to call it, just the idea that, well, just don't think that way. Uh, that's not correct. And, you know, you need to overcome your mind's idea that this is a man and this is a woman. And my belief is that it's a, it's a misguided attempt to make that happen, is that I don't think we're ever going to, I don't think society will ever overcome that 100%. There will be people who, and again, I know trans people. I'm happy to call you any pronoun you want. I'm happy to call you a woman. I really am. But mm -hmm. I have to admit that in my heart of hearts, I go, you're a transgender woman. And I know the difference. And I I can't stop myself from recognizing the difference. I can't. Yeah. So I guess the delusion or the wishful thinking, whatever you want to call it, is that the idea that society will eventually get to the point where we see no uh, noted difference between transgender woman and a, a biological woman. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if society can get there. I can't. I mean, well, because there is a di there is a difference. But they don't um, want there to be. They want they. A lot of transgender campaigners want you to say there is no difference. A woman is a woman. And well, I, but see, you said yourself like you'll refer to them as a woman. You will. I mean, 
I you can recognize them as a woman. I think society but, can do that. However, but yeah, yeah, there there are differences and that causes uh understandable controversies in such things as, you know, competitive sports, right? It also um, causes hardship for I mean, let's put it this way, one of the greatest markers of human happiness is the ability to find a partner and settle down. I hate to say it as much as I, you know, I've dated transgender people. Um but it was always with the understanding that, listen, this is not, uh, you know, with the eventual hope of getting married, because I'm a kind of traditional guy where I want to settle down and I want to have children. Uh, and that's clear that not going to be possible with a, a trend. I mean, obviously, we could adopt or something else, but I want to make my own. I want to release my own horrific demon spawn in the world. That's my hope. So uh, that's and that's a problem that I think people overlook is the, the biological component. I mean, they're saying like one of the reasons these doctors are worried about kids jumping into this stuff so quickly is they're like, I don't think they're considering the ramifications on not only their love life, but their reproductive rights. I mean, a kid who, you know, if you have your uterus taken out, you're never going to have kids. If you regret it later down the line, uh, tough shit. You know, you're fucked at that point. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if society will ever get to the point where. You know, the dating pool is going to open up to you in the same way a biological woman might have it. There's going to be a lot of guys who go, oh, I could never be with a transgender woman. Uh, you know, I'm a little more open, but even me, I have you know reservations in terms of what I'm looking for in a relationship. So that's kind of the idealism that people need to come to terms with is I think they're expecting that society is just going to go. Yeah, you guys are basically the exact same as biological women and everyone's going to want to date you and love you and everything else. But I still think they're going to find it very hard to find partners uh, that that appeal to them. I mean, there's already articles now, transgender people saying, you know, why I'm on these these dating apps and I don't ever get any responses. And you're like, I don't know, man. A lot of people are not comfortable with it. And the question is, will they ever become comfortable with it? I can't necessarily tell you. Yeah, I think it's fair to say transgender women are women, but they're not biological I mean, in probably in probably in. Well, in a way, it sounds like we're we're saying to them, yes, you're women, but uh, either not really or but you're women with a severe disadvantage in a variety of ways, a disadvantage that you cannot overcome through societal programming. You can't convince. Can you convince, you know, the dating pool of biological men that you are the exact same as the, the biological women they've been seeking? I don't know. I lean towards no. I meet a lot. I yeah, meet a lot of yeah. guys who are just like I would never date a transgender woman. I'm like, well, you know, that's your choice and you're right. Some mm -hmm. people say it's bigoted to say that, but I, I don't agree with that but, line. But yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone has preferences. And, right. You know. Uh, well, not everyone. I. I mean, I. But yeah, um, some most level people. Of preference. Most people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. True. 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 Yeah. I mean, yeah. even if it's just the anyway, opposite sex. <laughs> um. But, I, okay, I would like yeah. to say everyone has preference. For instance, yeah. I would not I would not date a child. That's one yeah, preference okay. of mine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully most people have a preference. Yeah. Uh let me so this discussion we're having has been a great discussion. Um unfortunately, I have a feeling we're gonna get called bigots just for you know trying That's to have fine. an discussion. That's good. It, you, it is you, okay. you you might have something to worry about. Me at this point, I go, yeah, oh. I'm a, I don't care anymore. Yeah. Uh, well, after this protest situation, I'm like, just call me a bigot. It's just easier. Just if you need to hate me, just hate me. Cancel me, whatever. Because uh, I've lost my mind. I've lost my patience with a lot of this stuff. The idea that we can't talk about any of these uh, things or have any sort of opinion on them. Uh, good. Fine. Cancel me. And yeah. uh, that's the message I give with peace and love. And the reason you can... Afford not to care because you can literally afford not to care because uh, you have s enough support followers, on Patreon yes. and, fo and a big enough uh, you, uh, online following, video following. So everybody isn't, you isn't know, that the worst? Is that our ability to speak is a cap a function of capitalism? Uh, where if you have money, you can actually say what's on your mind. That drives true. that drives me up a wall. Well, the good thing is, like, anybody really, you can say whatever the hell's on your mind, but you're going to face much more serious repercussions. Like, you could literally starve, uh, you right. know, if, if you're not rich. Um, so, uh, so everyone, you know, obviously, I encourage you to support Vito. I like his work. He's very funny. 
uh, typically, although this, we've got a little serious here, but, but you know, we're, no, but it's good to get serious. I think. It, I, yeah. I, I, I don't know, man. We've just reached the point again. I, I'd say to these, the transgender community, you're not going to stop these discussions. I know you want to. And I don't, I, I don't know why you want to actually. I know that's what you keep saying is that, you know, why do you guys have any opinions on this? We should decide what's right for our community. But these are very this is a very new time in the in the human uh, condition. We have not had this uh, understanding of gender. It's all very new and foreign to us. Yeah. So uh, you can't just shut it down. Sorry, I'm yeah, just rambling if, tonight. No, no. And if there really are, um, you know, biological differences, you know, beyond just the standard xx and xy if that's really is true like you know explain that to people help help people understand that instead of you know grabbing their sign and throwing them into a rock uh for <laughs> right. may, may i uh c would you care to comment on some of the other videos from the protest yeah if you want to you want bring them up real quick or yeah, something yeah yeah let me bring up real quick um and of course, uh, Associated Press was not the only one to lie about you. Uh, Variety. Yeah, Variety said I'm pushing people. <laughs> um, okay, so here's here we go again. This is Vito's friend. Yeah, Dick and Masterson. Scott. We do a podcast called The Biggest Problem in the Universe. Great podcast, okay. if I must say so myself. Before I show Dick getting uh, assaulted by peaceful protesters right um, please everybody uh you know support me as well as you know if you can support and, matt uh, i'm fine yes, please. no i'm and not the rumble fine. rants support rumble matt rants. first <laughs> and uh you got the youtube super chat but rumble rants as well and rumble rants does pay uh, a higher percentage to the video creators nice. like myself yeah. um here we go Oh, this guy's grabbing my stuff. Oh no, he's grabbing my stuff. This guy's attacking me. This guy's attacking me. <laughs> oh shit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Get this guy. Get this guy on camera. He, he just shoved me into the thing. All right, so um, that really, look, that is assault. He got, he really did get right. shoved. Uh, and it's the same guy instigated the whole thing. See, what's this guy's name again? He's a Netflix employee. Uh, Joe yeah, this, Cristalli, this is the guy, right? Joe Cristalli, who uh, he's a big shot at Netflix, right? Yeah, well, he's a he's a big time writer. He uh, is writing for the Frasier reboot, and he took it on himself to. Uh, I mean, he destroyed my sign. And I guess he really wanted to smash more signs. So he tried to do it the same thing to Dick. And while he was, you know, wrestling with Dick, this guy accused Dick of uh, trying to, uh, what do you call it? Strangle. Yeah, uh, excuse him trying to strangle him. And then the guy came and shoved his head into a rock. Uh, oh, I just finally saw there's a chat. Uh, hi, chat. People are chat, saying I'm lying. Yeah. I don't know what you about... think I'm lying about. Well, one person, let's see, Philip Blair, he said that uh, transgender surgery goes back until at least the 1920s. I don't know. I, I mean, I suppose that's possible. I, I, I mean, know. I know that, it, but here's the thing. I mean, when we talk about it, and, saying, and, but, but really, I don't think that has much to do with what, I mean, it was not nearly about. as common as it is now. You used, yeah, used to exactly. make international yeah. news when it happened. Uh, and again, I mean, we're talking about can you truly transition or is it always going to be some sort of facsimile of the real thing uh but i i, I mean I, I hope nobody's i'm not when i say this is the first time in human history i mean uh you, you want to say a hundred years is a long time i mean we've been going for a while fam. yes yes <laughs> you can say no we've been doing it for 50 100 years uh still very new in the uh, pantheon of uh modern uh, yeah, it, it, human yeah. history yeah and now it is becoming normalized and that's creating you know conversation of, uh, conversation yeah. exactly yeah. um so the guy who instigated this uh again not for that conversation he's against that guy or any conversation yeah that he disagrees with um 
grabbed your sign, destroyed it, grabbed Dick's sign, uh, and instigated uh, this assault on Dick. Now, he did give an interview, an on-the-fly interview to uh, Reuters in a Reuters live stream. And so I'm going to play this. Um, it's just a minute or so. And there's pauses after he says some things. And I'll give you an opportunity to uh, to comment or translate. All right. Here we go. Here we go. So why, why are you out here today, Joe? Uh, because I think uh, there's a right to say what you want to, but you don't necessarily need to if you're not giving it context. So there's a right to say what you want to, but <laughs> but you don't need to. Yeah. And if you don't need to, then you can get assaulted. I don't know. Uh, yeah. A lot of this guy's rhetoric is very weird. He's like, everybody should be allowed to speak, but they shouldn't be allowed to speak. And you're like, bro, <laughs> I'm really confused. I don't even know what you're saying. And this is a freaking writer, a head writer top writer on uh like the fraser reboot yeah i mean as we as i've been saying to people i'm like you guys realize the funniest part of this is a comedy writer <laughs> going i'm gonna step on a sign that says jokes are funny you're like bro <laughs> that's true this guy's a comedy writer fraser's yeah. comedy oh my god and he's like whoa 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 jokes are funny <laughs> that is very funny wow Shut this bigotry that. down yeah it's a true absurdity <laughs> all right he goes on Uh, and I think Netflix being such an enormous platform, it's sort of given license to people who don't happen to live in liberal cities and liberal states, the confidence to make the kinds of jokes that Dave's making at people's expense with no real consequences, which feels unfortunate and unfair. So what he says here is... People in other parts of the country might make the same jokes, but they don't have liberals around to yell at them. <laughs> like, literally, and that's that's why it's not okay. Chappelle's making it okay to make those jokes, but they might happen somewhere that I'm not, and I can't break their <laughs> sign or whatever. <laughs> I'm like, dude, this is this like a bit? Are you doing a bit? I don't get it. What do, what do you say? What on earth? So, yeah, they don't live in liberal cities, so they can get away with it. Here we can, you know, shut it down. Uh, yeah, this guy's kind of crazy. It goes on. He, we have more. Here we go. Um, he does sound reasonable if you just listen to this. But when you see what he did, then it, it's just absurd. All right, here we go. Because, yeah, anyway. All right, we'll continue. Yeah. Do, 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 do. We have a trans daughter, and I don't think I'm not completely worried about her in this state and this city. But if we live somewhere else, I'd be I'd be more terrified, and I, I'm still terrified here of what's going to happen. I don't know what what is so. What is this guy terrified of what exactly? It, what's weird is he I'm literally just said, "I'm not afraid in L.A.," and then he said, "I'm terrified here." I am actually I am terrified of here. Well, you get state yeah. in the city. But if we trans daughter and I don't think I'm not completely worried about her in this state and the city. But if we live somewhere else, I'd be I'd be more terrified. And I, I'm still terrified here of what's going to happen. What the hell? I, I feel safe in this city, but, but I'm, I'm terrified. terrified here. Like, what the hell? Well, the thing is that you get these very broad you know i'm scared i'm what what are, what are you worried about exactly uh are you worried someone's gonna like try to kill your daughter someone's gonna or people are gonna be mean to her i mean what is, what is your concern exactly uh because i don't see anybody out there going i want to you know kill no no i mean sure there's extreme bigots for the but for the most part nobody is out here being like we want trans people to die or you know we want to hurt them or whatever else uh, there's a lot of claims and then uh, whenever it comes down to that they go well you know you don't want us to die but by not doing xx and x that's going to lead to either us getting killed or us killing ourselves and you're like okay but i mean i don't have control over you killing yourself necessarily nor do i want you to kill yourself 
Uh, and it's very weird that you're putting that on me or telling me your kid's going to be unsafe because I laughed at a comedy special. Yeah, that, that's it's that's, like a, such a bizarre yeah. situation that I'm in where they go, well, what? You don't care if my daughter dies? And I'm like, I just laughed at a Dave Chappelle special, bro. I, I, I don't want anything to happen to your daughter. It's yeah. very confusing, and I want I, I don't know if they're being like who how did they get to this point where they go, everyone's trying to kill my daughter? Like, dude, we're really I, I'm not, and I know there, yes, there's bigots out there, but I mean he seems to be saying if Dave Chappelle makes this joke, some guy in Texas is gonna go kill a bunch of trans women. I'm like, dude, I don't think it works that way. Also, I mean, it's just so it's almost like he's bigoted towards people who don't live in LA with him. You know, that they're so yeah. dumb or, or or angry and unhinged and psychopathic that they'll kill people because they don't, you know, because they might. I mean, yeah, I mean, something. right now, someone in the chat is saying, well, trans children are bullied. OK, kids get bullied for being different, man. Like bullying sucks. Yeah. Uh, you know, kids can get bullied for listening, you know, wearing their hair the wrong way. The goth kids, whatever, the emo kids like everybody, <clears throat> you know, being just standing out in any way results in bullying. It's true. Uh, it's true. And you can't say, well, Dave can't make any jokes because, you know, some kids might get bullied by other idiots. Uh, frankly, what children do, what I, I'm not I'm not an educator. I'm not a parent. If children are behaving badly, it isn't because Dave Chappelle made some jokes. OK, and you can educate your kids and tell them, all right, knock it off. Don't, you know, hit or spit or whatever on kids on the playground. But it's not the it's not the duty of comedians to sanitize what they're talking about. For the sake of uh, kids, uh, I always hate the do it for the children excuse. It's like, uh, listen, man, we bend over backwards to make the way our ch children in America, first of all, have one of the greatest life expectancies. And, you know, being a kid in America ain't too bad. So telling us, but you can't joke about that because, you know, we have a bullying issue in the schools. That's for the schools to deal with, not not comedians. I mean. Philip Blair says he, he thinks it's admirable that the father is protective of his trans daughter. I mean, it's admirable for a parent to care about their children and be protective of them, but is breaking someone's sign and, and you know, instigating assaults on peaceful protesters who just have signs that say Dave is funny? Is, no, but he will. He will he'll say this is a good example. He'll say, look, honey, I went and I fought for your rights. That horrible, bigoted man with his jokes are funny sign. I put him in his place. And that's that's the disconnect is that if you're on the right side of history, uh, then all actions are excused. You can be as violent as you want because you're basically facing off against a facsimile of Hitler. I mean, they would say that I'm a violent bigot. I mean, you've talked to me. We might disagree on uh, our interpretation of gender and how people should sort through it. But as I've said a million times, uh, anyone who thinks I don't want you to live your life the way you want to live your life uh, is crazy. I want you to do all sorts of crazy stuff. I really do. <laughs> you know, I want you to go absolutely fucking nuts for the short amount of time you're here on this earth. I just worry, you know, in some cases that I want you to find happiness. And I don't know if you're finding happiness through some of what you're trying to do or the ideology that you're putting out there. Uh, you might even be leading people away from happiness by telling them, you know, this is going to bring you, this is going to make you your true self when maybe it isn't true. Maybe we don't know that necessarily. All right, here we go. He's got a little more to say. Oh, well, we translated. We gave our, our opinion on that. Here we go. What Dave says, I mean, if you watch the whole thing, he makes a lot of poignant, nice points. And you have like human moments in it. But it's just surrounded in just so much hate that Netflix, it'd be great if they either took it down or put some sort of warning in front of it that said, this is not good for impressionable people. This is not good for simple-minded people that aren't going to be able to follow what the real attempt at subversive comedy is. So, I mean, all he's saying here is that you're too stupid to listen to Chappelle, America. Yeah. Uh, he even like, admitted that it's got some great parts of in it. Right, that he, but even he finds his poignant. This is a guy who is so detached from reality. He seems to think that anyone who lives in like a different part of the country is just like too stupid to wrap their heads. Or they're oh yeah, these you know uh, all these people in these Trump states, they're not going to get it, and Netflix needs to <laughs> dumb it down for them. Uh, 
it's like the most clueless out of touch dude it's kind of a parody of a real person it's it, utterly bizarre he's i don't like, think this guy i don't think this guy has ever talked to anybody in a flyover state look i've talked to these people they're not nearly as dumb as we want to pretend they are because i am a liberal like i'm a hardcore liberal and you want to think all these trump guys are insane and i do just think uh voting for trump look i don't agree with it i think that guy's a terrible president but you talk to some of these people and you go, well, these people are, you know, intelligent. They just have very different ideas about what's right or wrong or what gets, yeah. you know, results. Uh, and to simply go, well, they're too stupid to get comedy. <laughs> so we have to put a warning label on it that says, <laughs> warning, you might be too dumb to understand yeah. how hurtful this is. He's like, we might have to, you know, I thought it was very poignant. Uh, how and I it was great how Dave Chappelle totally humanized uh, a transgender woman uh, and shared this incredible, you know, wonderful humanizing story of transgender people. I'm just yeah. worried some people is going to, you know, interpret I'm worried that everyone's in, as, as a secret yeah. message to go out and kill trans people <laughs> i'm just where people are going to interpret that some dumb people, you know, out outside of L.A. You know, yeah. where they're just going to interpret that as a secret message to go kill people or something. This is I like mean, the ultimate, like, don't watch TV because it's not made for you, bigot yeah. or whatever. You're like, dude, you're saying the quiet part out loud. Look, I've understood. Yeah. In the back of my mind, I go, ah, some of these guys are too stupid for me. You know, people who criticize me. I go, ah, well, they're just too stupid. They just don't get it, which may or may not be true. But you don't get on a news camera and go, well, actually, I'm smarter than the rest of the world. And uh, that's why we got to put a disclaimer on this comedy special. Nah, man, that's you, you have those private writer thoughts when you're trying to convince yourself of your own importance. You don't proudly proclaim them to the news like you're a defender of truth. Yeah, let's see. Dave Chappelle in the special, he said he's against the uh, transgender laws, like banning them from bathrooms. He's, uh, you know, totally for uh transgender people's like rights like, equal rights he said all this but yeah I, I think it's all a secret message to discriminate against trans people all right um people are too dumb they'll think it's a message to discriminate we have now one more clip Vito. yes and this is so before you got attacked had your sign destroyed i believe this is before you tell me okay so here you are um, getting pulled back. You're, you're approaching the speaker and you get pulled back. Is this, this is before, right? Must be before. Yeah, this was before. Okay. Yeah, hold on. I haven't actually watched this clip too much. Yeah, somebody grabs me. That's and, not, and a, you, and you, you can't do you, that either. Well, you put your hands up. Uh, so you're not being aggressive physically. No, uh, of course yeah. not. Yeah. And, Although I, at the same time, I mean, would you say it's fair to, you know, to pull you back from a speaker just to make sure you don't uh, interfere? What do you think? I don't know. I don't know what the rules are. It's a it's a public space. They didn't like rent the space. They don't own mm. that like little speaker's mm. podium. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they can stand. It, it's very complicated exactly what, who or who can't do. But ultimately, I mean, yeah, no, you can't be like grabbing people. If you want to block me with your body or something, sure. But I mean, look, I'm not going to I'm not going to waste time with it. But again, I don't put my hands on anybody at these protests because. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And that's kind of. the. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I, was, I mean, it, we're going to hear a woman say, you know, that she like pulled you back. Um, the, the important thing, I think. I don't have a weapon, make, man. I, like, exactly. I have the a important weapon. Thing, you're not. <laughs> yeah. You're not. Uh, physically you know push i'm in anybody. a i'm in a free and you immediately space, retreat man. too yeah you yeah, immediately well, retreat. first of all i don't want the crowd to tag me look if you're standing on the street with a sign you don't own that street okay if i want to come up and i want to stand right next to you with my own sign i have that right now granted like if you want to just stand if you got like 10 you know if you got a crowd of like 100 people and you're able to like stand in front of me i can't knock you over to get where to, to where i'm going uh sure but yeah i don't Let's hear what Blossom Blossom is the name of a transgender woman who, you know, says she pulled you back. Let's see what she says. There was 
And there was a fucking chud who like tried to come up and disrupt right before you came and speak. Could you talk? About so you're that fucking chud. Do you know what right. that means? I actually had to look that up. Uh, isn't it something human underground dweller? Yeah, yeah. So you're. Yeah. Yeah, you're subhuman. <laughs> They're calling you. What subhuman. is the C part? But it's not subhuman, is it? Um, or is it subhuman? But they use part know. of that, it's from a movie. That, it's from a movie. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here we go. Chud is slang for. No, it doesn't tell me what it's. That Chud stands for something. Cannibalistic oh, humanoid yeah. underground dro- dweller. So I'm cannibalistic. Yeah. Here we go. Un- underground dweller. About that moment for a little bit? Yeah, you know, he had already been causing problems. Basically, he was a supporter of Dave Chappelle and thinking and talking about how his jokes were so funny and all this other stuff. And it was my turn to speak at the mic. And so, right as I got ready to go, I felt a nudge like somebody was shoving me and it was him. And so, what I ended up doing was grabbing him by the backpack and pulling him all the way back with one hand. Because they didn't know a black trans woman could do that. <laughs> and I was just like, you got us messed up. No, what you're not going to do is you're not going to disrupt the speakers. If you're going to protest and have a hissy fit, go on, have it over there. Not over here. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not with it. Okay. Well, you did go over there and... Yeah, and yeah. I did my own thing and then they yelled at me anyway. I have every right to disrupt you. I really do. Again, man, you got to play by the rules. The rules of the land say... If you want to have your protest in like a little private space where no one can bother you, you have that right. Okay. But like, again, like Dick just stood silently behind him with a sign and they tried to crack his skull open. If, uh, well, why do people think that protests are like this little private powwow where you just get to go and no one shows up and says anything and you control the space? If you want to have that protest, man, go rent your own space. I can't stop you from doing that. I'm sure Netflix has a courtyard that they'd let you use for their, you know, corporate approved protest. You guys are out in a public courtyard. It's an open event for the public. Okay. If I want to have my heckler's veto and yell, I love jokes. It's funny. My name's Vito. Heckler's veto. Uh, I'm allowed to do so. And I'm sorry. You don't like, obviously you don't like it. I get it. it says, I don't know. A black trans woman is, uh, can do that. Look, I've had a black trans woman do many things. And I know many of the things you people are capable of. And I love a lot of them. So, uh, again, I'm not a bigot. Why is <laughs> whatever. I'm a chud. <laughs> I'm a happy she, chud. She has she has some more to say. Well, thank you. <laughs> and uh, you're confronting pretty much every bigot that showed up today. There you go. Yeah, yeah. you're a bigot. You're charting a bigot. All right. But, but now this yeah. now it gets interesting. Now it gets interesting. I, I think this is interesting. So you were, you know, physically pulled back. And I I I think I can understand her point of view. You know, they're running an event that uh and they don't yeah, want you they don't they don't the want event. disruption yeah, even though well, they're here, disrupting this space themselves but here we go but here we go she in here she just grabs a mic in a cnn event i don't want to take this away from you but let me tell you something black trans women are being killed in this country and cnn you have erased black trans <laughs> women for the last time let me tell you oh something. oh my god black trans women are dying our lives All matter right. I'm an extraordinary black trans woman, and I deserve to be here. My black trans sisters that are here, I am tired. I am so tired. I'm just sitting there, and it's not Ma'am. just my black trans women, Ma'am. it's my black trans brothers too. And I'm Ma'am. gonna say what I'm gonna All right, so yeah, I just think the projection that- from these people is the best. I love it that they go, Yo, you can't interrupt a space, and then they go, You literally just interrupted. And that was a private space, let's be clear. Okay, I interrupted a public space. You wanted to do a private venue and said, it's my turn to speak. I'm in charge. That's hilarious. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, sure. Yeah, I did find uh, that interesting. It's and hilarious. But, but what else is interesting is yes. how the CNN hosts react. So, I mean, they he's, he's annoyed. He's like, man, 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 can I speak? But then they just... You know, let her take. Let her keep door. going. Yeah. No, no, no. Just come here. No, no. I just want to ask you something. Come here. Tell me. Come here. I want you to talk. What's your name? I'm Blossom C. Brown. Blossom. Let me ask. Google me. Blossom. Please Google me. Blossom. Google thank me. you. Google let me tell you something. Let me. Let me. No. Don't come on the stage. Don't okay, come on the stage. Okay. Can, may I have the mic? Okay. May I have the mic? Blossom. Let me tell okay. you something. The reason that we're here is to validate people like you. 
That is why we're giving, but that is why we're here. Okay. But I. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. I, I can't. Hang on, we can't hear you, this. Blossom. We can't hear you here, Blossom. We can't hear you. <laughs> it gives her mic back. Baby, your actions have to speak. She gave her the, she gave, she gave right. her the mic back. Now, I mean, uh, I just, just the, you know, the. It's Again, like, yeah. I feel so bad for the regular transgender community. I don't know if "regular" is the right term, but just the, the average trans person who goes, "Look." This makes me happy. It's not that complicated. I don't want to, you know, get caught up in who's or what's of gender. I just want to call myself a woman. I want basic human rights and respect. The bathroom thing. I'm, I'm there with you. All bathrooms should be unisex. Men and women will all share them together. I get it. Uh, and I just feel bad for them because they're like, but instead I'm lumped in with just crazy. Just yelling and screaming and coming after comedians. And I think that the transgender people who are doing these sorts of things are doing a great disservice to the average trans person who really, I think, just wants to be left alone and live their lives uh, with happiness, whatever whatever that means for them. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. man. I, I guess what really this is just kind of a good ending because <laughs> the whole Netflix protest was about how supposedly the transgender community is getting totally misrepresented and mistreated. They're not allowed to speak. They're not allowed yeah. to speak. But when they grab the microphone at a televised yeah. event, the hosts it's, very it's gently and calmly go, well, we, we want to hear from you. OK, we're sorry we didn't call on you yet. You know, yeah. every attempt is being made to bend over backwards yes. to hear the trans community. Uh, but when anyone else wants to speak on it, it's you, well, you don't have the right to talk about this. You're a bigot, whatever else. And we go, yeah. all right, man. Well, I don't accept that. I'm a big, I know I'm not, here's the thing. Everybody can call me a bigot. Everybody can call me a chud. I don't care. Cause I know in my heart what I want for people and what I want for people is to have so many rights that it blows their fucking mind. I want you to have the right to do fucking, as long as you're not hurting anybody else. That's all I care about. Right. Even if you want to hurt yourself, I don't care if you want to, you know, take drugs, whatever else. That's your right as a freaking American. Uh, so, no, I'm not a bigot. Uh, but I do care about comedy deeply. And that's why I'm going to stand up and say I care about jokes. And I do have this concern about the dialogue around these issues where I think part of the human condition is we're trying to figure out how to make people achieve their maximum happiness. And I think people right now are preaching some ideas where I go, I don't know about that. That seems untested. Uh, even some of the doctors who previously said this was a good idea are now saying we're a little more hesitant. We're not sure if this is leading people to happiness. Is that bigotry that I'm concerned for people being happy? Like, I don't know, man. That sounds crazy to me, but that's that's what I'm being told. Yeah, no, I, I think I mean, I think it's up to the individual and um, I think it's fair to be skeptical, skeptical. And to encourage people to be um, careful, you know, to, to be reminded the, these are serious uh, steps they're taking that, that may not be reversible in some cases. But honestly, Vito, I think typically they are warned by doctors uh, of that. I mean, although, you know, some doctors are a little too eager, not just when it comes to transgender uh treatment but they're pretty eager just to i know, think treat and get yes. paid unfortunately i'm sure there's some doctors who are having due diligence and warning everybody but i am hearing i read look i'm very invested in this topic because it, again it is a fascinating topic and this is an unprecedented time for our understanding of gender i don't know how anyone could not be fascinated by these stories it's it's we're talking about dicks and vaginas of course every, how can you of not course. be interested yeah which is but then when i read the stories where trans people i don't know maybe these stories are made up or maybe they're not representative of the whole but people go my god the doctors didn't give me the information i needed to make an informed decision as a young person i'm very concerned again i would say uh check out my buddy mr girl's channel youtube.com slash mr girl he has some great uh, stuff to consider and again neither him nor me we both have transgender friends yeah. we support the transgender uh, search for rights and everything else but i do think that i share some of his concerns and he's outlined them very well in some of his videos i, I again i just gotta say it is so interesting and and 
funny that the whole thing was that the media is treating us wrong. Netflix is treating us wrong. They're discriminating against transgender people. When this is just proof that the media, if anything, is spins in favor of the transgender community. They smeared the fuck out of you in favor of yes. the transgender community. Um, they spun the whole protest in favor of the transgender community. They, you know, made it out to be this big thing. It was a tiny, tiny thing. They spun the protest organizer in favor of her, even though they didn't mention even, that she Yeah, has one's a very as, racist tweets, racist yeah. background, and the other one interrupts. If it was anyone else, it would, I mean, if you had that, they, they would have reported all that shit. Oh, of course. I'm yeah. sure some journalists went through all my tweets trying to say that I'm a violent yeah. transphobe at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm very excited to be talking to people on all sides of the aisle. I mean, I've, I've had people come to me privately, um, you know, film stars, game uh, developers, you know, uh, verified journalists all coming to me privately and going, thank you so much for taking a stand, not just for comedy, but for the right to dialogue and open discussion and being able to talk about these topics. Uh, because a lot of this conversation has been shut down and they will cancel people who they say are on the wrong side of history. I want to hope. I mean, not to get ahead of myself, but just uh, some of the people I'm talking with were very excited uh, at the reaction people had to our, our silly little protest or whatever, that people really do seem to share the same ideas. And they seem to be saying, well, you're right. I don't know why we're not allowed to talk about some of these things. So hopefully moving forward uh we're, we're gonna have more of that we're gonna have more dialogue and i'm glad that we took a stand for that me and dick uh together um quick if anyone has any uh wants to do a rumble rant or super chat we'll answer a couple questions if you, if you don't mind for a couple more yeah i know i didn't win everybody over and i'm not here to win everybody over all i want to say is why why do you think people feel like they can't talk about this? Do you really think it's just bigots are getting shouted down and they're mad about it? Or do you think people have common sense concerns that they feel they aren't able to voice? Because uh, for me, I feel like it's the second thing. I don't think the people trying to talk about this necessarily hate trans people. So I'll ask you a question, Vito. What do you think of the term punching down? Because I see in the comments a lot of people have an issue with Chappelle's comedy special because they say he's punching down. Well, I mean, the question always is who determines which way is up or down. I hate these direction based uh, assumptions. For instance, the whole concept of left and right, I reject it entirely. Uh, you know, saying that a Nazi is to the right of a Republican. I don't associate Republicans with Nazis at all. I'm not that disingenuous. Uh, but some people would, you know, so there's this imaginary spectrum that we're supposed to believe that we're on. And, uh, I don't agree with the spectrum. How do you determine who's above or below someone in the stack? For instance, okay. So the Jewish community obviously has suffered great, uh, historical, uh, suffering, right? But uh, if you look at the Jewish population now, it's a thriving population. They occupy positions of great. Uh, societal respect they have a higher standard of living than most people or most other communities is it wrong for me to make jokes about jews and what is that based on you know their prior oppression or their current oppression whatever else or asians who are uh, you know experiencing great success in america should i not punch down against them based on again historical mistreatment current mistreatment uh what it seems to come down to is uh, white people, you have enjoyed great success for some period of years, and now you shouldn't joke about anybody else. Uh, and I guess I just want to, I don't know, man. People are not able to define this punching down very well for me, especially because, as we always say, especially in the comedy community, we go, well, I can make fun of hicks and rednecks and crackers mm -hmm. and whatever else. But I mean, the, the, you know, there are poor white people who are suffering. Why am I allowed to rip on them? Uh, and Dave Chappelle did do that. He he ripped on pretty much every demographic there is. Uh, poor uh, people, you know, white people, black people, Jewish people, veterans, really every demographic. I think the second um, you try to establish a rule for comedy of what you can and can't joke about, you're going to have some really bad comedy. Oh, yeah. and by the way, your super chats are turned off. 
That how, how would that how how does that happen? Uh, you got to go and when you start a stream on YouTube, there's like a yeah. do you want to have super chats thing? What the fuck? Sorry, man. All right, I gotta <laughs> that. that sucks. Rumble yeah, well, rants, everyone. Rumble rants. Rumble Come rants. On. Um. So um, yeah, that punching down thing. I mean, I mean, look, he, I'm not going to make fun of like a, I don't know, like a crippled kid or something. I get no, that. No, no, but if it's funny. Maybe I would. That's yeah, true. I mean, if it's funny, I also, I mean, I know a lot of disabled people, uh, in, you know, from my uh, just work as coworkers, classmates, uh, family yeah. even, and they've taught me a lot of valuable things. Uh, one of those valuable things is that disabled people are assholes too. <laughs> I mean, yeah, absolutely. But, and, um, you know, I think it's disrespectful. Uh, to treat them differently, honestly, and I and they they are insulted. Those that I've uh, met, they're insulted. They don't want to be treated differently. Um, and it's also, I think you got to look. People say intent doesn't matter, but I don't know, man. I think you can look at where a joke comes from. Is a joke like really? Is the joke? What is the purpose of the joke? What is the punchline? Is the punchline? Ha ha! You know, Asian people are stupid and ugly, or is it? Ha ha! You know, cultures are different from one another, and isn't it interesting to analyze? You know, how our cultures are different, or how we react to things differently. Uh, and if the punchline is "ha ha," you know, this group, this minority, is stupid and deserving of ridicule, that sucks. But I think a lot of the time, it's just like, isn't it interesting the differences between us? I always bring up accents. Like people always say that accents are racist. You know, like a poop from The Simpsons, we can't have that. Because it's an uh, offensive Indian stereotype, but uh, I think accents are just universally funny. It's the the language, hearing the way that different people talk. It's not saying that the person speaking that way is uneducated. Yeah. It's just oh, isn't it? You know, if you do a Italian guy, a stereotypical Italian guy, oh, it's a me, Luigi. I'm gonna make you the pizza pie. It's funny. It's melodical. It's not coming down on Italian people and uh, denigrating them or the way that they talk. So I think people now are just so hypersensitive that anything comes anywhere close to those topics. Uh, they consider it, again, punching down when I would almost say yeah. it's a celebration. Everybody loves making funny Italian stereotype uh, voices. And me as an Italian, I love it. I'm glad that we're known for our, you know, our violent uh, <laughs> organized crime <laughs> past and whatever else. I find it all hilarious. <laughs> Uh, but, you can say, well, you're a white guy in a position of privilege, so you're able to joke about it. OK, maybe, but I still find it funny. Yeah, I, uh, Kyle Kalinske, I don't know if you, you know who he is, but he made a great example. I mean, he's Italian, too, and his mom can't stand the Sopranos. Yeah, she hates how, how she it hates takes... how they're portrayed. Yes. Every Italian and, guy yeah. I know is so glad that everybody thinks we're in the mob. We think it's hilarious. <laughs> I, I am a Arab American. I mean, I don't really identify as white or anything, but I, technically, I you know, I have a Syrian no. Lebanese background, background. My grandparents are, you know, Syrian Lebanese. And I, you know, there are depiction in the media. We've had our share of you know, sure. of characters. But what I mean, whatever. I mean, uh anyway i mean <sighs> well the comedian shouldn't be held for task if the joke look if i made a joke about an arab guy being a terrorist uh again you can't say well you can't make those jokes it would be better to say well what was the context of the joke was the comedian really trying to express this thing about all arab people or was it actually a joke that i mean there was a great uh curb your enthusiasm plot line where he's dealing with a fatwa against him and you know a, an entire arab group is trying to kill him but you know, I think he falls in love with like an Arab girl and ends up being this journey of whatever else. And you're like, well, that's all funny and clearly, you know, challenging stereotypes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. It really is. It can be hard to put things in context, but I think you have to try. And, and things are so I mean, really aren't so simple as like in this case, are are we really is the trans community really a community that's like so down when it comes to media? And how the media treats them, because, like I said, the media is, you know, puts them up, hoists them. They're on a pedestal. You know, yeah. if, if, if just a small group has an issue with a giant uh, show that most people don't have any issue with, they get put on this giant pedestal. And it's a mainstream news story that's all slanted towards their views. I mean, that's not 
punching down in that scenario. If you want to comment on that, that's not punching down at all. Um, now I will say that, yeah, I mean, transgender people, duh, they've, they've got some, uh, serious, uh, things to deal with. Like, I mean, I have just in my, in my own day, like I think, God, what the fuck am I doing with that, my life? And if I had to add, Oh fuck, what, you know, am I really a guy? Should I be a girl? Like that yeah. would definitely add to my daily stress. So my God. And, and also, you know, the bullying over it and, and such, um, having to worry about using a restroom, all this, this is terrible. Higher death rate, but I don't think the death, you know, a higher death rate is related to comedy. I'm sorry. And yet people like these protesters have actually said that the jokes are killing people. The lead organizer said that the jokes are killing people. Yeah. And they got to understand we're never going to accept that. Uh, yeah. It, 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 you will never. I can't imagine. I can't think of any time that you could draw a direct line between a joke and someone getting murdered. Now, they're going to say it shapes people's attitudes against transgender people but i mean if you look at the numbers look the murder rate for transgender individuals is extremely low it's far lower than the national average most of the transgender people who are murdered are in the black community and the black community does suffer uh disproportionately compared to the rest of america uh so yeah being uh, i don't know the the correct way to put that but being a black american is a very scary dangerous uh place to be and you are very disenfranchised a white transgender person you're going to face far less you know anyone who comes to me and they're like i'm worried about being killed and i'm like you're you're a white person yeah. like don't worry too much about it our our murder rate is very low uh you don't have to worry about cops and living in the you know disenfranchised areas and whatever else uh so, but yeah trying to use that rhetoric to shut down comedy uh to say well you're getting us killed with your jokes I'm, I'm, yeah. I mean, I can say sort uh, citation, please uh, point yeah. me to that article, point me to that hard data, because uh, I'm not just going to accept that on face value. Actually, I do have some examples for you, Vito, of people getting killed. Yeah. Uh, after jokes. And, you nice. know, yeah. So the only examples I'm aware of are people are offended by the jokes and they actually start killing people because they're offended by the jokes, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> which is no. not the jokes. It's right. the people, the, the jokes are not creating the violence. It's people who violent people who can't take a joke. Yeah. Get are, mad and then go to, yeah, go to town on somebody yeah, who respond to words with violence. That's what creates violence. And the, the w one example that comes to mind is the Charlie Hebdo. Yeah. Uh, situation that in was France, uh, right? horrifying yeah but they storm into a an office building and kill a bunch of people because you insulted the glory of allah uh with a with a cartoon with a cartoon is a cartoon just depicting yeah. uh the image of muhammad uh and the people responded some, some radical islamists i mean as we saw killed the people as we saw at the protests, we did not come there with violence, but I'm pretty sure if they had the opportunity to get me in a room and beat the crap out of me for saying jokes are funny, I'm pretty sure Joe Cristalli would uh, be on board. Uh, and again, they're going to say, well, you lead to this mythical violence committed by some unknown masked assailant. He watches the uh, Dave Chappelle special, and then he goes out and just starts killing women. And uh, I don't know this guy. I did not encourage this guy, and I do not condone this guy and say that we're responsible for him. Uh, come on. Come on, guys. Yeah. There's there's, there's so many levels of uh, nonsense that you have to go through before you kill somebody. I don't think it goes from, well, Chappelle said it was okay, so why not? Come on. Yeah. that guy. Anybody who kills anybody has a little bit more going on in their life than they watched a couple comedy specials. And I gotta, I can't help but... I think I got to assume that the people who shot up, uh, you know, the office, Charlie Hebdo. They, the Charlie Hebdo offices, they would blame it on the joke. They say right. we're killing people because because of the joke. It bl it's because of the joke. We had to. We had they to would defend take no our responsibility. Honor. Yes. They take no would take no responsibility for their own actions. Um, anyway, and I, I and I think we should be encouraging people to take control you have control over your own actions you can decide whether to respond to a joke even if it's bullying 
and that's not that is not at all what happened with this Chappelle comedy yeah. special. Um, even then, you you choose how you uh, respond to it. Um, and it uh, typically, like, yeah. typically, if you make it clear to the bully that you cannot take a joke, it, it that does not help your situation. Um, it seems like most violence comes out of a desire for respect or people who feel disrespected become violent because they feel they deserve respect. We all desire respect as human beings. And that's sure. obviously what's at the center of this transgender thing. But what you have to tell the people is, uh, I know that your simian brain demands respect because you think it's going to be a way to obtain resources. You know, if they don't respect me, I'm not going to get first pick of the hunt or whatever else. That's a very it's a very dangerous simian reptilian instinct to demand respect from everyone around you respect my god respect my religion whatever else you really just have to at some point go a lot of people aren't going to respect me yeah and you got to go and that's okay yes because yeah. do you respect every single person you know i can think of plenty of people that i have no respect for and uh not not you know necessarily groups marginalized groups just people individuals whatever else but even if somebody wants to say, listen, man, I don't respect your gender identity. I really don't think men can become women. You can't get if you get angry, you can be upset. I understand being upset. Sure. I understand being like, well, that sucks for me as somebody who wants to be recognized as a woman. But when you when you start to turn that into like anger or whatever else, uh, you go off the rails. Now, if that person's trying to deny you your rights, if they're trying to pass sure. legislation that's going to impact you, absolutely. I'd be furious. Yeah, but yeah. if what people are telling you is, listen, man, I don't think you're a woman. And uh, I'm gonna make jokes about it, whatever Just else. Fuck them. It's that yeah, simple. Fuck them. fuck them. Yeah. And I, I hate to say it, sometimes you gotta roll like, with the punches. Uh, yeah. You yeah, can't to be let clear. I, I didn't mean no. little. Just to be totally safe, I didn't. No, mean no, no, no. You no. cannot <laughs> rape people if they, if they right. you know, don't want to recognize. Even if you think Dave Chappelle's not respecting <laughs> you, I don't think Dave Chappelle is the guy who's gonna try and deny you your human rights. And that's who you should focus your attention on. Stop. Stop worrying about. And you can say, well, respect leads to rights. Sure, in some ways, but sometimes the respect that you think you deserve. Uh, I think I honestly think it's unreasonable to tell all of America that you have to accept, you know, that I'm a woman. I think a lot of people are going to disagree and you got to roll with that. There's still people now who will, you know, and I think they're completely nuts who say, you know, I, I will never accept homosexual love. You know, and you go, well, I, you know, I personally find that ridiculous. I mean, if somebody loves somebody, who cares? But I have to say that guy's not my enemy as long as he's not opposing my desire for rights, as long as he's not opposing gay marriage, as long as he's like, yeah, you know, uh, I'm not going to deny you a house. I'm not going to, you know, take your job away. I think that's the kind of respect you want. You want respect for, I disagree with you, but you're a human being and I, I respect your right to exist and be happy. And I think that's, what's worth striving towards. I agree. I mean, I think it's fair to, to, you know, I think everyone should, you know, treat people. If someone is acts like a woman, wants to be treated like a woman, uh, or, or referred to as a woman, I think that's totally, totally reasonable. Um, I think that's very reasonable. Yeah, yeah. yeah, in a in a public setting, in a in a in a professional setting, if someone says I'm a woman, you go, yeah. sure. Uh, you know, but if they come to you privately and they go, do you really think I'm a woman? And you go, well, I have to be honest with you. I don't I completely agree with the ideology. You can't go, well, you're a bigot. You got to go, okay, well, I, I don't like that, but I, you know, what can I do? Yeah. Well, you can go, you're a bigot, but you don't just don't, don't lose your cool. <laughs> I don't think, yeah. help it. I don't think they are bigots though. I really don't. I mean, if it comes from well, a I'm place saying you can hate, say, hey, we're, if, yeah. we're, if we're going free, if we're going to yeah, go free sure. speech, you know, yeah, and we are. We're both big free speech supporters, and hell yeah, you call them. I don't think having want, a different, but, uh, yeah. But ad hominem attacks in general don't really accomplish much. They're very counterproductive. Uh, Sorry to cut you off again. No, no, no. I just think we need to tell people. Listen, man. No one's gonna. You even people within the transgender community disagree on what gender is. So if somebody mm -hmm. disagrees with your concept of gender, okay, it's a disagreement. You can say, well, your disagreement erases my identity uh okay it doesn't though because it's your identity you can have whatever identity you want and i can't stop you if i want to believe i'm i'm blue from blues clues secretly reincarnated as a big fat italian man you can't tell me not to okay but i can't force anyone else to validate that i can't demand respect for my viewpoint on my identity it's 
it's unreasonable to expect that honestly and the, and the best way to get respect is to is to be reasonable and don't like demand things like That's you are true. entitled right to be treated you know exactly how you want to be you have to earn respect you have to treat people with respect and they will you know typically that's how people people will respond in kind you well, know? that's what I keep saying to the trans community is I'm like, you guys would have so much more love from the community and from everyone around you and understanding of your, your position if instead of t attacking Harry Potter and Dave Chappelle, okay, you found some truly bad actors and you said, just be, just do what I did at the protest. Be very relaxed. Be very, listen, we're here for something. You honestly could have made me look like an idiot if you had been a very peaceful group and you're like, I don't know who this guy is who's yelling. We're just here to talk about what we think. We just want to have a very export, you know, important discussion, whatever else. But that wasn't what you were having. You were having a loud, angry, we don't understand comedy riot. And a couple of comedians showed up and the whole thing went off the rails. Uh, I think these trans leaders, again, are using just insane rhetoric, saying that you're going to get us all killed with your comedy. And no one some people are buying into that and some people are saying yeah you're right comedy kills people but the majority of people are going to go i'm not canceling dave Chappelle for you i won't do it we don't want to pick better battles ultimately that's that's all i can uh, that's my advice yes censorship you're at you if you advocate for censorship like that's you're gonna lose you're on the uh, you're on the side of yeah you're not <laughs> in a good position when you're going you know let's burn these books uh it's not helpful some people actually said we're trying to say that the protesters weren't advocating for censorship. That's just not true. Many of them were, even if it wasn't in their official demands and there was some forms of censorship in their official demands. They wanted the removal of like any um, like poster, or any remnants of the show from the offices. They wanted it removed. They I mean, want <laughs> here's their ultimate goal. And they've said it very clearly. We want a transgender person on the board. And they're not going to implement a person who's a very common sense, comedy minded person who goes, oh, satire and whatever protected. We know and we're 100 percent. They want some sort of activist on there who can make sure that nothing like this ever gets approved again. That's yeah. what happens at all these organizations. You look at the board, you find they find some social activist who immediately starts cracking down on everyone. And then uh, everyone's too afraid to fire this person as they you know, drive the network into the ground. So I'm hoping Netflix stands firm and says, listen, we're open to having, you know, a transgender person on the board, but we're not going to use one of your hand selected activists. We're going to find somebody who understands comedy, free speech, the nature of our network. And uh, we're going to go with someone like that. Uh, I hope that's what happens. I hope Netflix, you know, is reasonable about this and doesn't let one of these ideologues control the network. And uh, again, they know they can't cancel Chappelle. He's too big to cancel. What they want to cancel is guys like me, smaller up and coming comedians who are, you know, have their own fan bases and are maybe funny enough to get a special, but you know, they might have one or two jokes about a protected topic and they're going to go, sorry, you know, we can't make the deal work. Get out of here. Uh, whoever's in, uh, this new person in the board of directors said no go. Uh, and that's what they want to stamp out. They want control. They're, they're finding their ways into positions of control. And uh, unfortunately for them, we have the Internet where guys like me and you, we can have a discussion. Nobody can stop us. Uh, we can collect donations from our audiences and uh, to fuel our conversations. And uh, that makes these uh, activists very upset. They're upset that they don't control the conversation. Yeah. And it's not just they, the demands. We're not just hiring uh, one tra a trans person. It's like a whole kind of new. Uh, layer of bureaucracy, like a new kind of oversight. Yeah, didn't they uh, want to make layer. like an oversight committee for offensive yeah. content? On you're like, yeah. bro, I know what you're doing. Stop. <laughs> They're going. No, we're being very reasonable. We just want like one or two or ten or a hundred of our buddies to have a special division <laughs> at Netflix that determines everything that gets approved on the platform. And you're like, oh, okay, very reasonable. Okay, yeah. sure. And then, yeah, and it's so obvious that you know they'll say, "Oh, we don't want to censor." We didn't say yeah, we, we don't want to censor, censor here. No, 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 no. We just want to stop anything like this from ever getting published again. <laughs> we just want before you watch the special, you have to watch twenty minutes uh, history of the entire transgender community and how jokes get us killed. All right, it's too much, guys. Well, Vito, thanks for sticking with me. Uh, from being thank you for having me. Absolutely. Time. Any, I'll let you have the last word. If you, what, what would you like to leave us with? Uh, I'm the funniest man in America, ah. and everyone should follow me. 
and uh, I'm the next Dave Chappelle. There you go. No, I don't know. Ooh. Look, I want love and liberty and happiness for all people. Uh, the fact that anybody would come out here and say that I or Dave Chappelle or anybody else is a bigot. Comedians are not bigots by and far. We really don't. Our whole goal as a comedian is to make people laugh, to bring people happiness. So at what point would we be in that pursuit of our ultimate goal and say, also, though, I want to hurt this one group in particular? We're really not those kind of people. At least most comedians I've met are not that way. So please, when you see a comedian making a joke, I'd urge you to consider that maybe it comes from a place of uh, honest desire to make people laugh and share love and whatever else and not from a desire of hurting a marginalized or protected group. It's really not my way of living my life. And again, most comedians I know, it's not how they live theirs. Uh, God bless Dave Chappelle. God bless the United States of America. Subscribe to youtube.com slash veto for love and life and happiness in your life. That's the and, bottom line. And subscribe to Orf on Rumble. Thank you, Vito from the veto channel <laughs> yeah youtube.com slash veto it's the easiest place to find me also you can check out my podcast with my buddy dick masterson at biggest problem dot show the biggest problem in the universe podcast also available on youtube go check it out all right cool and uh i'm gonna end the broadcast but you stick around and tell me how to fix this, you know, super chat thing or YouTube's yeah, for sure. just demonetizing me or censoring me again. 